a lot of strong showers that missed us by about 40 miles to the north. There's some other rain back over by the Ohio border that could be in play as the night goes on. Houston won the toss, deferred the option, so we will get the top of the marquee matchup of Roethlisberger and Watts right away here tonight. Randy Bullock will kick it. And three Archer back deep to receive for Pittsburgh. Texans, Steelers. Final act of week seven underway here in the NFL and no return for Archer. Pittsburgh will start at the 20. This is career game 150 for Ben Roethlisberger in a reserve role once. So it's start number 149. And if he can win the next two starts, he'll win 100 of his first 150. Pretty high winning percentage. And John, what are the things this team needs to get going with Ben at the helm here tonight? i like to see Ben run a little bit more. He hasn't used his legs much. They got to get a second receiver, someone other than Antonio <laughs> Brown needs to contribute to this Steeler pass offense. Rookie Martavis Bryant is active tonight for the first time in his NFL career. They have an outstanding running back in Le'Veon Bell, and they go Roethlisberger running on that first one. That's a keeper for five yards. That's a zone read with a built-in pop pass. Ben Roethlisberger is going to read the defensive end. This looks like a Saturday game right here, Mike. Mm -hmm. And Whitney Merciless got fooled. There's a lot to this Steeler running game. Le'Veon Bell, and to get Ben Roethlisberger as a contributor will help them. Roethlisberger has only run 10 times this year. The man you just saw, number 10, is Bryant. The fourth round pick out of Clemson. Roethlisberger pass deflected and incomplete as Brian Cushing was closing in. Oh, Ryan Pickett got up there to help deflect it. That Steeler offense up front is anchored by Marquise Pouncey towards ACL early last year. Kind of getting back to that solid form of his. As for the guys who will touch the ball, we focus on the middle. Antonio Brown, Le'Veon Bell, Killer Bees when they are going. Will the others contribute along with this outstanding fifth-year receiver and second-year running back out of Central Michigan and Michigan State, respectively. Third and five, five in the pattern, and Roethlisberger is complete. And the stretch for the first down, picked up by Bell, who we're starting to see more of a receiver role here, John. They need to get more from Bell, not just on screens and checkdowns. This young man can run routes. And in an empty backfield set, you're going to see a lot of option routes tonight from That's Le'Veon Bell. Steelers. They want to expose the underneath coverage of this Texan defense. There's Ramon Foster against... J.J. Watt on a bull rush. Good work. From the 30, Bell, good patient runner, has good vision. Will gain about three Look yards in that one. Brooks Reed made the tackle. Let's introduce you to that Houston defense. Obviously, top of the marquee, it's J.J. Watt. Garrett Crick doing a good job on the opposite side of him. The linebackers, Cushing, has injured his ACL a couple of years back-to-back. -back. He's trying to get back to his form. This secondary seen a lot of passes hit over the top. Deep balls, so safety play. Swearinger and Lewis will be important with Jackson and Joseph trying to get out of their struggles Lewis. on the corner. Lewis. Second and six, Roethlisberger hit as he throws. Bell spins out of a tackle. Bring it up to Le'Veon Bell for a first down at the 44-yard line. J.J. Watt struck him but missed him. What a great play by Roethlisberger. J.J. Watt, right side of your screen, working against David DeCastro, wins easily on an inside move. And once again, missed tackles by the Houston Texans continue to plague him. Nice resourcefulness by Big Ben. Cushing's got to make that stop. One run, two carries for Bell so far. Second carry. And a gain of uh, just more than a yard. So Le'Veon Bell hurt his foot, John, when he got here in his rookie season. So he got off to a slow start. But towards the end of the season, it picked up. And this year, right from the start, healthy, trim, confident. Look at what he's done. First player in Steeler history 
over 100 yards total receiving and rushing in the first six games. And he picks up blitzes, and the young man doesn't fumble the football. He's taking great care of it as a professional. Off the gain of two out of the pistol on second and eight. Roethlisberger going to take a deep shot downfield for the rookie. And it's incomplete intended for the speedster, Bryant. Well, on cue, there's good pickup by Le'Veon Bell. And that's the young man Steeler fans want to see. Oh, Martavius Bryant, draft choice out of Clemson. This is what he does. He stretches the field. That time he goes after Boye, the young corner. Keep an eye on number 10 tonight, especially when the Steelers get in the red zone. Saw former Chiefs head coach Todd Haley, the offensive coordinator, year three in that job in Pittsburgh. Third and eight, Steelers use that bunch to the left. They're so good out of that often. A lot of contact there by Howe and no flag. So Andre Howe, the safety who came in, was draped all over Wheaton, but no flag and the punting unit. That's good coverage by these young Texans in the secondary. It's a bunch, three receivers scatter in different directions, and I've seen that called this year. I think Hal might have got away with one. The Australian via LSU, the lefty Brad Wing sends one very deep, and with perfect spin, it will be kept right around the five-yard line. Four eight on the hang time. And Wing does a nice job to get Houston along the field with a 48-yard kick. From Steeler Nation, ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by New Red's Wicked Apple. Refreshingly hard. NFLshop.com gets free shipping today at the official store of the NFL. And Autotrader.com. Land a great deal on your perfect car at Autotrader.com. From the super fans like... Ken Statterman to the ownership. The Rooneys, the second and third generation of the ownership, goes back to the chief, the great Art Rooney, the founder of this franchise. Steeler football is so ingrained in Pittsburgh. At the beginning of that little piece you saw, the man who's been a locker room attendant going back to the old stadium for over three decades. Steeler football is in the blood of Western PA. The Texans begin from their own six. And Arian Foster takes it three to the nine. The handoff coming from Ryan Fitzpatrick, true journeyman in the NFL. He's made starts for five different teams. 84th start here tonight for the 10th year man out of Harvard. Everybody talks about Fitzpatrick and this Texan offense and the need to start faster. This offensive line has got to block better, especially early in games. Stick, stick. Hey, you got to wolf, wolf, wolf. Second and seven, and it will be Foster to the left, right into his center, and then a circle back, and had nowhere to go as Lawrence Timmons and Troy Polamalu close in on him. It's going to be third down for this Houston offense, that offensive line trying to get some push, but by Myers in the middle, round the left tackle the best, handling the ball two of the best. Darian Foster, the running back, Andre Johnson in the middle, and similar story. Will the players around them, like the young DeAndre Hopkins, step up here tonight on the road? Third and six for a team that has struggled, as John was alluding to, on opening drives. Three and out against the Colts last Thursday night. And Fitzpatrick got away from a would-be sack and fires. It is complete. Held on to by Damaris Johnson. That's a big Texans first down. What a great play by Fitzpatrick. The pocket crumbled all around him, backed up on his own goal line. He has the presence to escape, keep his eyes downfield, and find Damaris Johnson, who's been a great pickup, the ex-Philadelphia Eagle. Foster to the right, breaks the tackle, and Foster puts his shoulder down. Rolls through Mike Mitchell for a first down. That's what we said in his pregame show, Mike. Up tempo, no huddle, snap it and run a stretch play. It bothers the Pittsburgh Steelers. And once again, they get gashed with an early down run. Plays to get off the field. Worlds missed the sack on third down. Timmons missed that tackle there. 
Becomes an 11 yard gain for Foster. And Fitzpatrick seeking space, nowhere to go. He's brought down a gain of a yard. Arthur Motes, the linebacker, chased a lot of unfamiliar names after the years of getting so comfortable with some of these Steelers. They had to bring Brett Kiesel back. They have an injury tonight. Steve McClendon's not on the nose. He's out, so Cam Thomas is there. Worlds, Spence, Timmons, Motes, the names of the linebackers for the Steelers. In the secondary, Bryce McCain gets a start tonight. There have been struggles for Cortez Allen. Troy Polamalu's still there. He has not missed a snap last year or this. Now in year 12 in the league. Foster trying to get to the right. Got away from the tackle. Got another first down. And Arian Foster steps out of bounds. Just shy of midfield. Boy, this is an outstanding back. Nobody's doing it better than Arian Foster. Just a draw play off your right side. Missed tackles. You see Spence number 51. Pittsburgh needs better play from these linebackers. The veteran James Harrison comes in. As now it's Alfred Blue running to the left. Will spell for Foster and Blue. The sixth round pick out of LSU. Gets a few yards. You brought up Kiesel. You see James Harrison, the 36-year-old, is back. Watching carefully on the practice field on Saturday. All he did was condition. And he's worked hard to get himself in shape. And boy, does Pittsburgh need a pass rusher. Jason Worlds, Arthur Motes have struggled. Opening drive for the Texans, halfway through the first. And Fitzpatrick finds the laces and finds Andre Johnson. Reception for the seven-time Pro Bowler. As good a Texan as there has ever been. That's what Bill O'Brien, the head coach of the Texans, likes to do. He loves these no-back formations. Flooding five free-releasers into the secondary. He knows they've got some matchups in their favor look for him to use that empty formation 10 to 12 times tonight third and three foster back in there uh, the ninth play of the drive and they'll run third and three foster get the first down and foster so good second level runs takes it all the way to the 12 yard line Pickup of 33 yards. Ground the line of scrimmage. If you miss a tackle, Arian Foster will hurt you. Right at Lawrence Timmons. Just an inside zone out of the shotgun. Good second level blocking by Chris Myers and Arian Foster. Arguably the best all purpose back in the business. Some pretty good players in pursuit there, but Foster. The big run, five carries and 59 yards on this opening drive for the Texans in the red zone. On the 11th, Fitzpatrick about to get hit, finds Blue to the end zone. His first NFL touchdown. You think veteran quarterbacks don't bring something to the table? That's the second time Fitzpatrick did an outstanding job in the pocket. Backed up on his own goal line. This time it's the red zone. Looking to his right, he has the presence to get to his outset outlet receiver and Alfred Blue. Puts Houston on top. Impressive drive by the Texans on the road. Backed up at their own six-yard line. A couple of third down conversions on that drive. Randy Bullock adds the extra point. 10 plays, 94 yards, led by Fitzpatrick. 7-0, Houston. Good work by the running backs. Arian Foster carried it five times for 59 yards. And his backup, Alfred Blue, able to take it in from 11 yards on the reception for his first NFL touchdown. And for the first time since week two, the Texans are on the board in the opening quarter. The Steeler defense is back to those same bemused looks we saw in the 31-10 game against Cleveland. That's what Bill O'Brien wanted to do, start faster. They worked hard on that this week. That extra preparation paid off, Mike. And John, no return for Archer. So J.J. Watt, the Texans defense with a lead on the field when you come back. 
So we got stats, we got scores, we got honors, but what are the little things that make JJ Watt special? Uh, the inside move is unbelievable. And he can swat these passes. Look at that arm length and the way that he can time these jumps. He sees a short step set by a guard. Unbelievable. <laughs> he can reject these passes and his inside move for a big man is unbelievable. This is what the guard is looking at, Mike. He just beat the caster on an inside move. And when he does bat a pass down, that's one thing. But I've also seen him catch it with these humongous hands. This is a living freak playing at an unbelievably high level. I'd be shocked if he doesn't make an impact play here quickly. Like Tomlin said, the intersection of ability and intelligence provides you for potential fireworks every snap when he's on the field. He seems trying to avoid that tonight. Spinning run by Bell for a yard. Let's look at Watt in that opening Pittsburgh series. Well, he's hard to find because they play him in multiple positions. He's at right end in a nickel defense. Then he's at a right defensive tackle position. Then he's over there playing left end. That's the first series of the game. So you got to have your head on a swivel and communicate clearly if you're on offense. Pittsburgh no huddle, trying to find some tempo. Watt pursuing Bell. As Le'Veon Bell tripped over Ryan Pickett, the nose tackle. Gain of three. Take a look at J.J. Watt. That's just good second effort defense. You have the quarterback on some of these zone reads. If you see the ball handed, run to the ball. Yeah. Took out his own man, the other defensive end, Crick. Third and long five. Houston rushing a twisting four. Roethlisberger pumping. Throwing. Complete with a flag down. It is the man he looks for so often in those situations. Antonio Brown. Check the flag. Holding. Number 24. Defense. That penalty's declined. Play results in a first down. Well, Coleman, the referee here tonight. Well, when you play too deep with man-to-man -man underneath, oftentimes you use a stunt to try to contain the quarterback. And once again, Ben Roethlisberger goes tremendous poise under duress. He is not afraid to hold the ball for longer than anyone in this league. First and 10. Play action. Roethlisberger sidearm sling to Brown. DJ Swearinger tackles him to safety. Brings him down a yard shy of the first down. You know, defensive coordinator Romeo Crennel is going to try to stop Antonio Brown. He knows Interstate 84 is where the ball is going. And this whole game plan is set up to stop Antonio Brown. So far, Pittsburgh has used this tempo and multiple formations to get him a rock. Second and one, Bell. Love watching him run as he gets the first down across midfield and into Houston territory. It's a little like hop step as he just watches and assesses, and then he really hits the hole with great power and speed. He doesn't look like a young back. He had great success in this no-huddle, single-back alignment. Watch Roethlisberger. He's on his own. He calls his own plays in this no-huddle offense. 56. First down. There's Bell. There's no space to find this time. The linebacker core. Coming to beat me. Whitney Merciless, Mike Muhammad on the stop. We talked about Bell and trying to get him the right places. Todd Haley's calling the plays. Romeo Cornell on the other side. When Todd was the head coach in, in Kansas City, three, Romeo was his defensive coordinator. And then when Haley was fired, Cornell replaced him for the balance of that season and then another full season after that. So they know the way yeah. that each guy likes to think and approach the game plan process. Bell with the catch. Good tackle in the open field by Kendrick Lewis. Going to bring down third and long. John, one of the things about Romeo Cornell that Todd Haley knows will come when you go against him. He knows Romeo Cornell has a theme of the week. I got a blitz that you haven't seen. I have a coverage that you haven't seen. But I'm going to study what you do and make you do it another way to beat me. Let's see what he does with J.J. Watt on this third and long situation. He's going to work inside over David DeCastro, number 66. Castro, the guard out of Stanford, former first rounder. Third and nine, Roethlisberger, Merciless has him. He lost the football, and Watt has the recovery. Roethlisberger trying to escape, and he's so good at that. But that's why Whitney Merciless, also a first round pick back in his day, 
knocked it away. And J.J. Watt's got his hands on the ball again. You can't hold the ball this long. Merciless. Watt has set Tex the Texans up. Second fumble that Roethlisberger has lost this year in Houston, which has been so opportunistic in forcing opponents' turnovers. Get their hands on the ball for the 15th time. 15th takeaway by this defense. Three Watt fumble recoveries. Watch the shot play. Ryan Fitzpatrick and the Texans take over in Steeler territory. And there is the shot downfield for Andre Johnson. Incomplete. Let's go back to the turtle. Well, when you get the center to set to the left, he's worried about the blitz over here. You get a one-on-one -on -one for J.J. Watt. He beat the Castro early with an inside move. That time he beat him with an outside move. Not good pass protection against the stunt. That's just very good pass rushing by this Texan front. Marion Foster to the right. Will gain five yards to the 41-yard line. Pushing and shoving post play as Foster peels himself off the pile. He's second in the NFL. He updated with the 64 yards he's already gained tonight. Remember, 2010 led the NFL. 1,616 yards, most ever for an undrafted player. That series of three 1,000-yard seasons that Foster had. And then last year, back injury, only eight games. Held to 542 yards. But has come back in that 2012 form thus far this season. Third and five, Ryan Fitzpatrick fires right. It's complete. And his tight end, Garrett Graham, has the first down. That's something Bill O'Brien said. Our offense is so good when we get a first down, get into a rhythm and a good tempo. And they got it here. Oh, good pass protection. And Spence, third-year linebacker out of Miami, struggling. If you give Fitzpatrick time, he can hurt you. And that's something the Texans have struggled to do in the last two weeks. Final minute of the quarter as Foster bounces it to the outside. A nice run by Arian Foster. Very close to the first down. Boy, Pittsburgh's trying everything. They even activated Daniel McClullers, number 62. Now, he isn't a big nose tackle. He's WWE big. He's got to be 350 pounds. His calves are like tree trunks. But the undersized Myers continues to position block extremely well. Now for Blue back in. He will get the first down. For Houston, you mentioned McCullers activated. It's the rookie's NFL debut with Steve McClendon hurt. After giving up 31 to Cleveland, Pittsburgh's trying to find answers on the defensive side. Thus far, Houston's about nine yards of play here in this first quarter. If you run a 34 defense like Pittsburgh and you struggle at nose tackle, you're in trouble. End of one here in Pittsburgh. And the Texans lead 7-0 on Monday Night Football. ESPN, celebrating 45 years of Monday Night Football. Eastern Washington, that was the only school that offered Ryan Fitzpatrick a scholarship. He ended up going to Harvard when those opportunities availed themselves. And it started a great journey. Drafted in the seventh round, played for the Rams. He started games in all these places. Cincinnati for a couple of years, had a dozen starts. Then to Buffalo, where he really had the most starts of his career. 53, Tennessee last year. He was supposed to get Jake Locker ready, but he ended up starting more because Locker got hurt. And Bill O'Brien thought this very smart young man from Harvard with great experience and starting experience would be the perfect guy to have in place to take this complex offensive system and get it going in year one. That's why the marriage of the head coach from Brown, the quarterback from Harvard. A lot of smart things happening in this Texans offense. 7-0 as the second quarter begins. Patrick adjusts the play at the 23. On the delay, it is blue. The rookie is stopped. The tackle by Arthur Boach. So journeyman sometimes a very negative tag, but John, he's such a positive to this first-year offense. Yeah, his intelligence has served him well. It allowed him to start for the Rams, start for the Bengals. He started for the Titans, the Bills. That's why he's starting here, Mike. His intelligence 
is off the charts. This kid is fascinated by hexagrams and the binary code. I mean, he's got brains that I don't have. I don't know about you, but this kid is really smart. From the 23, Foster runs up the middle, spin and gain two yards. When we talk about intelligence in football, so often it's measured when players are coming out of college with the Wonderlick test. Well, he set the bar at the high, 49 out of the 50 questions he got right. He always gets asked, which one didn't you get right? But how about the 49 he did get right? And he does apply it because this offense, with all of its complexities, he's able to tell receivers, no, you go here in this one. No, you're supposed to be over here. Very important as even veterans like Andre Johnson learn a brand new system for them. Read it, read it. You got the duel. They picked up all three third downs tonight. This is a long one, third and eight. It's Patrick for Foster out of the backfield. And Paul Amalu just uses his body to keep Foster from getting there. Field goal attempt come. And Pittsburgh has struggled to get pressure on Fitzpatrick. Everybody has gotten to Fitzpatrick, but Pittsburgh. And luckily, Troy Polamalu picks up Arian Foster. This ball's slightly underthrown. Or it's a touchdown. Pittsburgh must find a pass rush quick. 39-yard field goal attempt for Randy Bullock. Won the Groza Award at Texas A&M. Third-year kicker in the lead. The Shane Leckler hold. Bullock continues his good season. 10 of 12. After the turnover, it's a field goal. What a touchdown. Pittsburgh tonight. We go to Texas next Monday in Arlington. We'll see the six and one top of the league, Dallas Cowboys. How about them Cowboys? DeMarco Murray's got them rolling. Jay Gruden will bring in Deshaun Jackson, the Washington Redskins, and Colt McCoy. Old Texas Longhorn gets to start at quarterback next Monday. See you from Big D, 815 Eastern Time. Short kick so returnable. And here comes Archer trying to get the edge to the left. And three archers forced out of bounds at the 16-yard line by A.J. Boye. Pittsburgh offense wake-up call. They gotta get something going. Down 10. Texans have scored in their first two possessions. When the Steelers have the ball, they haven't scored. They were watching Big Ben against J.J. What have you seen so far? Well, we do. Ben was going to hold the ball like he always does and create some second reaction plays. Early in the game, he held the ball almost five and a half seconds, and he made a great play. Then I think he got a false sense of security. They fail to pick up a stunt. J.J. Watt continues to hunt. If you hold the ball four to five seconds against this defense, J.J. Watt will find you. He's already recovered nine fumbles in his career. He has 34 batted down passes. He's on his way, Mike, to possibly winning the MVP of the league, period, with the way he's playing. Only two defensive players have been named NFL MVP, and this is the last scheduled national telecast for J.J. Watt, so a chance to put his name on the conscience of the folks who will be thinking, talking, and eventually voting for the league MVP down the line. McGarrett Blunt is the back, and he gets hit hard by 34-year-old Ryan Pickett. He started it. Well, this offense needs to pick it up. The defense is clearly struggling. I expect this offense to start carrying the mail a little bit. But Pickett, number 94, sheds a block and stuffs LeGarrette Blunt. 25th Monday night football game for Ryan Pickett. That's a record, Mike. Around a long time, St. Louis and Green Bay, it's among active players. The most Monday night appearances for Pickett. A lot of those with the Packers, last eight years. Second and ten, and Blunt tries to bounce to the outside. Only a yard there. His Pittsburgh offense seems to be searching for an identity. I don't know what they are, Mike. Are they a no-huddle team? Are they a zone read team? They're using different ball carriers. They're trying different formations. They have a two-time world champion quarterback. They have a great back in Bell. Heath Miller's the tight end. Antonio Brown and a lot of first-round draft choices up front. They might need to carry things while this defense comes alive. So far, not good. As you can see, it's begun to shower a bit. Fans were raining booze down on the Steelers' offense. Roethlisberger takes a third-down shot. 
And the fans will continue their unhappiness. Incomplete to Wheaton. I don't understand what's going on with Marcus Wheaton. Last week in Cleveland, Roethlisberger and Wheaton not on the same page several times. And on this one-on-one -on -one situation, you see Joseph number 24 bump and run coverage. They just don't look like they're on the same page. And outside of Antonio Brown, no second receiver has stepped up for the Steelers. Brad Wing sends it. 54 yards, pinned towards the sideline. Is Keyshawn Martin a good special teams play to help minimize the return? Antoine Blake down there for Pittsburgh on the stop. As Arian Foster off to a good start. 75 yards, closing in on 100 at the half. Hines Field, where the Steelers, since this place opened 2001, they're the third best record in the league. New England, Baltimore, the only teams better, but nothing positive right now for Pittsburgh. Houston has scored on its first two possessions. And 29, Ryan Fitzpatrick starts with Foster again. This time he goes to the left. Foster with He's the He's had a off. good start running the ball tonight, John. No doubt, and they are running right a lot. Weak side zone play. Well blocked, missed tackles. Then they run a draw play. Bounce it to the right. Missing tackles. Foster on a weak side zone play to the right. Great cutback running. He's well on his way to a 100-yard night in the first half. The 33, Fitzpatrick going downfield. Brought in by DeAndre Hopkins. Working on Cortez Allen who has struggled throughout this season. First out, Houston. Get into a loaded front to stop the run. You play one-on-one -on -one coverage, and DeAndre Hopkins is a big play receiver, and that back shoulder throw is one of Fitzpatrick's favorites. 23 on the game for the second-year man out of Clemson. Developing into a pretty good receiver behind or along Andre Johnson's side. Foster at time could not get the corner turned and Timmons twists him out of bounds. Well that back shoulder throw is a fixture in this Texan offense. It's a go route. They want Hopkins to run by Allen. But if the corner is playing over the top, Fitzpatrick throws the back shoulder ball and the receiver adjusts. That thing is a beautiful, beautiful thing to watch. Second and 11 for Houston, and Fitzpatrick just waits patiently finds Keyshawn Martin working underneath his third reception of the Martin. season. Lawrence Timmons with the tackle. So tackle Bill O'Brien's pedigree, John, in the NFL was his time, his five years with New England and Brady and Belichick. Do you see a lot of Patriots stuff when you watch the Texans? I do, especially in a running game, but it's a credit to Bill O'Brien. He's learning about this team on the run. They're doing things that they did last year. You've seen the zone stretch running. But they're learning. They're growing. And here they are in the empty set. This is what Bill O'Brien loves the most. And his quarterback, Fitzpatrick, loves this too. Third and six. Steelers rush four. Fitzpatrick has time, but nobody open. Taking off. Diving to get there. Where's the spot? Very close. That's great effort by Ryan Fitzpatrick. There is no pass rush. Pittsburgh misses Harrison and Woodley of the old days. Fitzpatrick has all day to throw. He takes off and he leaps for the first down. I think he's got it. He knew exactly where the stake was. You got to appreciate that effort. But the Steelers, Mike, they have not found a pass rush, and that's been a strength of this organization for years. Measurement shows it's uh, that close. Just a few links and then the hook. Let's we'll see what Bill O'Brien would like to do here, just outside the 34-yard line. Well, Jay Bross, the fullback, just checked in. Fourth and inches. There's a lot of plays on that sideline sheet. Some involve the rookie fullback from Auburn, transferred from Illinois. Great story. 
but they like to use Prosh in some isolation lead blocking situations. I'd run it right at this Pittsburgh defense. They go for it. Prosh leads the way, and there goes Foster. First down as he's chased out of bounds by Mike Mitchell. This is a team that was 10 of 15 on third and one or fourth and one, right at the league average, and Prosh helps add to their total. You get Bill O'Brien and a quarterback with this intelligence 10 days to get ready. He's going to look at the defense and check this running play to the lighter of the two sides, and that's been a big part of this running game success tonight. The audibles of Fitzpatrick. Here he goes again. It's Alfred Blue is the back this time. The rookie comes to the right, and he is met by Sean Spence. John mentioned Spence earlier at a Northwest High School in Miami, played at the U. The former Hurricane tore up his knee in 2012. Slow to get back in 13, then was on injured reserve after a finger injury. Now he finds himself playing as Ryan Shazier, their first round pick, remains out tonight, missing his fourth game for Dick LeBeau with a sprained MCL. Second down and nine, Fitzpatrick. It never worked as the coverage was solid from Bryce McCain. Only played a little bit last week against Cleveland, but with the struggles of Cortez Allen, the former Texan is starting here for the Steelers tonight. And this up-tempo is wearing Pittsburgh out. You see Lawrence Timmons. He's sick. But Timmons has become the signal caller. They had to move Spence to Timmons' former position. They're a mess right now at linebacker, and it's hard to believe the Pittsburgh Steelers are lacking at the linebacker position. We had to bring in Vince Williams, the second-year man. Trying to stop this third possession. All three have come down to Steeler territory. Fitzpatrick slinging. Foster's going to have to do it on his own. And Williams, just in the game, bends back Foster for the stop. Good play by the former Florida State player. All right, keep an eye on Foster. He took an ugly yeah. twist there. Arian trying to do some damage after the catch. Looks like he's okay. Leg got bent underneath as Williams pulled him back there. Oof. So it'll be another field goal attempt. Bullock made 39. Now Randy tries from 38. Three possessions, three scores for Houston. Touchdown and the two field goals. They lead by 13. ESPN Monday Night Football brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. IBM. Today there's a new way to work, and it's made with IBM. And Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Many bridges spanning the rivers here in Pittsburgh. Just a really pretty downtown that has enjoyed a resurgence over the last few years. JJ Watt of the Texans up 13 to nothing. One turnover. A couple of drives have led to scores every time they've had the ball. Meantime, Ben Roethlisberger and the Steelers searching. Todd Haley trying to find something on that play sheet. 19 plays so far and only 54 yards. Bullock's kickoff is chased down and it's with Garrett Blunt on the kickoff return. And he won't even get to the 15-yard line as Jonathan Grimes back up back to tackle. Well, Mike Tomlin has the exact same record at this point as Bill Cowher did, 74 and 44. He's won a Super Bowl, been to another one. But, John, these are times of transition. Mike was honest about it and said it. So you look at our roster, you look at what's happened over the last few years, being 500 the last two seasons. It's transition time in Steeler country. Hey, it happens all around this league. It's just a matter of time before it happens to you. Taking over at their own 14, Roethlisberger pumps and is brought down by Watt. That second 
opportunity allows J.J. to get there and get the sack. I don't know what Pittsburgh's thinking. You're going to hold the ball a long time against J.J. Watt. You have a chipping back. You have Beecham over there. You have no chance. That ball's got to come out quick. And Mike Tomlin said we have to make quick decisions or what will get us. And so far, he has made his presence felt. They have to speed up the process of throwing the football or J.J. Watt will go to the Hall of Fame tonight. Fifth sack of the season. Blue 80. Blue Second and 19. It's Brown quickly on the outside. Only three yards. This Steeler offense looks bad right now. When you talk about J.J. Watt, we can talk stats, but there are other factors that give you the wow parts of J.J. Watt. I mean, what do you like? He's got incredible strength and stamina, long arms, the bat down passes. He's good against the run. He can run down your quarterback. Let me keep going. Got He's got here, playing yeah. range. He can use his hands. He gets off blocks. He can slip blocks. He can collapse double teams. He's got unbelievable short area quickness, and he can play multiple positions. What I like about him the best is he's really smart, and his motor never stops. Can you tell I like him? And he jumps offside. He's in the neutral zone there. Free play, Roethlisberger. And he tried to fire for Brown, and it was incomplete. Brian Cushing deflected it. Watson, that one on me there. That's the kiss that I gave him. Mike. Number 99, defense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Trying to stop him. Need some help. Lisa? Mike, uh, Steelers starting right tackle Marcus Gilbert is not on the field. He is back in the locker room being evaluated for concussion. We're being told that his return is questionable. Of course, this uh, Steeler offensive line has struggled already to start this game. <laughs> Mike Adams. Has to come in, in his place, the second round pick out of Ohio State, who lost his starting job last year. Flag makes it third and ten. Roethlisberger short. Bell's going to run away from pushing. Much needed first down and more. Le'Veon Bell into Texans territory. Huge game for the Steelers. 43-yarder. It's a weak lake of this defense of the Texans. They just don't have the linebacking speed in their underneath coverage and Brian Cushing coming off back-to-back -back injuries the last two seasons no match for Le'Veon Bell you can play all the combination coverages that you want but when you do that sometimes you need linebackers to match these backs underneath that time Bell beat Cushing bad they had 21 plays and 49 yards before that one which picked up 43 Roethlisberger saw something that wasn't good, so he takes the timeout. Pittsburgh trying to mount a scoring drive for the first time here tonight. Pittsburgh had dominated Cleveland so much over the years, so it's a shock to the collective site where they got dominated and then heard former Steelers on network TV criticize this team using the word soft, and they weren't really sure who they were. Ben Roethlisberger reacted to the criticism. They're in the media now. You know, they, the, a lot of the media likes to point fingers, and that's kind of what they do. They, they point blame at people, and a lot of times they don't know what they're talking about. So, uh, you know, you just can't, you can't let it bother you. We, the players here in the locker room uh, know what's going on, and, and that's why when those things are said, it's just, it's just kind of brushed off. When you have people who they share championship moments with over the years, Mike Tomlin said, hey, those guys have jobs to do now. That's their assessment. They know their football. But, of course, internally, when it's one of your own calling you out, just makes the wound a little bit deeper. Roethlisberger, deep drop, has to get rid of it. Towards Heath Miller. That's a good 13-yard game. Roethlisberger in pain with the left leg. What an unbelievable throw. Pittsburgh fails to pick up this blitz. And under intense fire, Ben Roethlisberger makes a great throw. 57, toggle unblocked. Keep an eye on Roethlisberger. Came up gingerly there, Mike. He's flexing that left leg, J.J. Watt hitting him just barely at the fringe before it was too late for a flag. Bell hit hard by Swearinger, bounced off the tackle. And stopped at the 25-yard line. And a lot of noise on the pile there. Swearinger was trying to grab the running back by the leg and pull him out of there. 
Let's go watch that hit by J.J. Watt one more time on Roethlisberger. Second and five, A.J. Boye is out of the game for Houston. Multiple medical staff for the Texans looking at him. Roethlisberger fires right. That's incomplete. Trying to get it to his fullback. Will Johnson only has one reception on the season. So it'll be third down. Keep an eye on Ben. Came up holding that knee. That time he didn't get his feet set properly. Missed the throw that he hits normally in his sleep. Keep an eye on these legs. Make sure he's okay. Keep an eye at the bottom of the screen. The rookie, number 10, Bryant. They want to send him deep in this game. J.J. Watt working on the substitute at tackle Mike Adams. Roethlisberger steps up, holding on and bringing him down. Whitney Merciless. That's a couple of good plays for Merciless. The third-year man out of Illinois forced the fumble that Watt recovered earlier. This front is loaded with high draft choices. People forget that Whitney Merciless is a first-round draft choice also. It's the second time they've run that tackle and stunt. And Ramon Foster and Kelvin Beecham haven't picked it up yet. Here's Sweesham. After the third sack, by the Texans tonight, it makes Sean Sweezum's field goal attempt a bit longer from 44 yards out. And Sweezum gets the first points of the night for the Steelers with 3.08 to go, 13-3. to The flowers away from here over at State College, college football Saturday night on your ABC station. JT Barrett has stepped in, done a nice job for Ohio State, taking on Penn State. On ABC, 8 Eastern Time, Saturday night. Of course, Bill O'Brien took this job with Houston after the two years of coaching Penn State. Jerry Sandusky scandal. Joe Paterno finally leaving that coaching position, and Bill O'Brien became the one. As so many wondered for years, who was ever going to replace Joe Paterno? It became O'Brien coming off of uh, his college experience. Bill told us that it was certainly an experience where he did a lot of internal finding and soul searching because of the difficulties at Penn State surrounding the Sandusky scandal and the post Paterno era. And then of course all the NCAA infraction penalties that Penn State was facing. They were still very representative in the Big Ten in those two years, working shorthanded 15 and 9, 10 and 6 in the conference, a couple of big wins. Of course, an outstanding quarterback, Christian Hackenberg, who they developed there, who's now continuing on in his second season. Danielle Manning back for the Sweezum kickoff. And he won't get his hands on it. Touchback. Right, pretty young at age 44. Started out as an assistant at his alma mater, Brown. It was with George O'Leary, very impactful time in his coaching career. A couple of stops. On the offensive side of the ACC, and then the NFL opportunity with Belichick and Brady for five years with the Pats. For more than two years, we just talked about in state college. John, you had a chance to spend some time with the new Texas coach. What were your impressions as we visited with Bill last night? Well, he's my kind of coach. No wasted motion, no storytelling. He gets after it. He's got an emotional fire I like too, Mike. Foster to the right. He gains three yards. That's he was pulled out by Cameron Hayward. Excuse me, Mike. I want to see this Pittsburgh Steelers defense make a play. Defensive coordinator Dick LeBeau, for years in these situations, has dialed up blitzes that I've never seen before. They must put pressure on Ryan Fitzpatrick. That's when he makes mistakes so far. Hasn't happened. Linda, Linda, Linda. It's a Pittsburgh team that has not forced turnovers over the last couple of years. Second and eight. Here comes Timmons chasing Fitzpatrick, and he gets to him. Lawrence Timmons with a sack and a loss of two yards. That's what Dick LeBeau did. He said, let me know when you're not sick. He turns to his captain, Lawrence Timmons, and blitzes him right off the edge. Look at the effort. He beats Newton, the right tackle of the Texans, on an inside move. That's Pittsburgh Steelers football. 
Timmons has done it all. He's played inside linebacker. He's played outside. He's even played defensive end. Good to see. Two-minute warning here in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh football, so many of the championships defined by the defense and the tremendous running back or linebacker core like Russell and Lambert and Jack Ham. And then in the 90s, two decades later, Lloyd Brown, everywhere you look, there was a great pass rusher coming off the edge. And even the modern day Steelers successful teams, Harrison, Foote, Farrier, Woodley. And these are the starting line of linebackers tonight for Pittsburgh. Boats and Timmons, Spence and Worlds. Nowhere near the accomplishments or the talents of the past players. And that's what we say, John. Team in transition. That's a perfect example when you look at the linebacker court. No doubt. Hey, it's hard to lose great players. It's hard. I've lived that. And it's harder to find the replacements. But it's getting real hard to train the replacements with this new CBA and the limitations on practice. So the Steelers, like everybody else, have to find some rushers. Jason Worlds is a franchise or transitional player making $10 million. Moats has the opportunity of a lifetime. Somebody's got to take advantage of the time on the field for this Pittsburgh defense. That's how they've done it for years. And the injuries, guys like Ryan Shazier and Jarvis Jones being out of the lineup, those are the players they hope are the next generation. But they're not here right now. Five man pressure as Fitzpatrick throws on third down. And the pressure forces it out early, pass incomplete, and the Texans are stopped on third down. That's Dick LeBeau his best. He goes to Timmons on second down, then he leans on the 36-year-old Brett Kiesel on third down. Kiesel, number 99 on the right side of your screen, pushes the pocket, forces an incompletion. He leads the Steelers in pressures. It's a good thing they re-signed him. Antonio Brown's a terrific punt returner catching the bomb picks of Shane Leckler. Sends him back to the 28th and well covered to the sideline as Brown is escorted to the sideline by Keem Dent, among others. Chris Berman coming up with the Toyota Halftime Report. Of Adam Schefter and Chris Mortensen with our insider notes, news from around the league. We'll talk about Colt McCoy in the quarterback spot with the Redskins. And everything that happened today in sports. Recapped on today in Sports Center. All coming up, Toyota halftime momentarily from our studios there in Bristol. I want to see the Steelers come back to Le'Veon Bell out of the backfield as a receiver and work these Houston Texan linebackers underneath. Great receiver. 42 yards net on that punt. Steelers get good field position, best of the night, the 37th. And there is Bell on cue. The downfield blocking from his center, Pouncey. Bell reads it like a patient runner and takes it to the 35-yard line. 28 on the game. I don't think Houston has anybody that can cover Le'Veon Bell in a passing game. 54, Muhammad, 36, Swearinger. That's why they play a dime defense, because they don't have enough coverage linebackers. How about Pouncey on the second level? His athleticism at the center position is a winning edge, but Le'Veon Bell, as a receiver, should have a huge night if the Texans continue to play man-to-man -man underneath. At 89, already a career high in receiving yards for Bell. Roethlisberger steps up, end zone shot, and is caught! Dragging the feet is the rookie Bryant, his first NFL catch, a Monday night touchdown. I love it. Somebody needed to step up for the Steelers and take over as the number two receiver. They lost Emmanuel Sanders to the Denver Broncos. They lost Jericho Cotchery. Who's it going to be? It's Martavius Bryant, top of the screen, post pattern. Watch him run down the corner. Slip them to the outside, and Big Ben makes a great throw. Check his feet here at the back end catch. And the rookie drags that left foot. It'll take a little minute here to look at this. Yeah, he's good. At the catch spot, he was just dragging that left one in time. You never know with these instant replay challenges, Mike. John Walt Coleman says it is a touchdown. I saw Walt. I know there. where you're going. You never know. Uh, that was quick. Two plays, 63 yards in the search for a home run hitter. 
Bryant answers the call. Squeeze him the extra point. And it's a three-point game. Ten in a row, just like that for the Steelers. That's a credit to Mike Tomlin. He told me that Bryant, a third-year junior out of Clemson, he's still raw. He doesn't know the entire offense. But in a limited package, we're going to get him on the field and we're going to use him. One thing Bryant can do is be a red zone factor on these jump balls. He's 6'4". You cover him. I mean, he was outstanding in the Orange Bowl against Ohio State. And tonight, he gets his first touchdown. Remember, DeAndre Hopkins, who's playing for the Texans, came out of Clemson. How about Sammy Watkins? Now they got Martavius Bryant. I want to go to Clemson and coach the receivers. Well, what a moment for Bryant. You know Mike Tomlin, he's uh, so great at giving you the encapsulating soundbite that just <laughs> defines the player. And he was just so matter of fact, he said, he's talented, it's time to take the wrapper off him. Let's see what they can do. He's been inactive all season. This is his first NFL game, his first catch. And it's a touchdown on a Monday night to put Pittsburgh within three. Martavis. Martavis Bryant. I'll pronounce his name correctly. He keeps playing like that. That's a great, great start for a young player. And Pittsburgh desperately needed that. Good job by Todd Haley, Ben Roethlisberger, as they put their heads together try to understand what would work the bell pass a couple of times on that prior drive to get down the field and on the start of that drive i'm going to put it in position for the shot to bryant and the touchdown danielle manning must the catch on the kickoff stone under at the five and all of a sudden stealer momentum here in pittsburgh look at those towels waving Danielle Manning, fortunate here because there is a host of Pittsburgh Steelers in his face quickly. I'm Mike Tomlin. I'm going to use a timeout if I can get a quick stop. He's got two left. Be careful with these young receivers of the Texans. Don't forget Hopkins, number 10, can fly. Ryan Fitzpatrick, Arian Foster, Polamalu running through, slipped and fell. As the showers continue to fall, the ground gets even more wet. Hayward with the tackle, and Mike Tomlin uses that second timeout. 74 seconds left until halftime. Our coverage from Spider Cam tonight brought to you by DirecTV. We've heard these fans boo before. They are frustrated. It's religion, it really is. We talk about the passion cities have for their teams, but these Pittsburgh fans, they carve out their three hours when the Steelers are on. Gins guys were bumming here for about a week after that Cleveland game. They beat Cleveland so many times, they were in shock when the Browns beat them 31-10 last week. Yeah, this is quite a football town. Six Lombardi trophies. Got to see Mr. Rooney in the office. Place just reeks with tradition. To play more Monday night games here. I'd be surprised if Dick LeBeau doesn't heat up Fitzpatrick in this field position again. Second and nine. Foster a run. Snuffed out by Jason Worlds. Timeout Pittsburgh. What he's doing, Mike, he's jamming the front. He's covering every lineman, creating one-on-ones. And if you want to run the ball against this, look, go ahead. You're outnumbered. Sean Spence, 51, secures the quarterback and then closes. But Jason Worlds has come alive. The sack by Timmons has ignited the Steelers. And that's what this defense has done for years, Mike. They have fed off big plays from the defense. And Ben Roethlisberger, if you just give him enough opportunities, he seems to always find a way. Pittsburgh out of timeouts. So the play plus the 40 seconds in between should take Houston to about 25 seconds, provided they don't run the ball here. I'm going to go back and look at that play, that last play. Just to see as the ball came out at the back end. Looked as though Foster was down, but we'll take another peek at it in review.
Steelers might be getting the ball here. We're going to look at a couple of angles and piece some evidence together. There you see the ball coming out, and it's just before the right knee, the left knee of Foster comes down on the ground. And there was a clear recovery by Pittsburgh, so they can give the Steelers the ball, not the touchdown, at the four if they determine that the ball came out, because there was no following recovery by Foster. Watch this angle right here. It's starting to come out before the knee comes down. Here's Walt Coleman. After reviewing the play, the runner's knee was not down when he lost possession of the ball. It is a fumble. It'll be first and goal for Pittsburgh at the three-yard line. Pittsburgh will be given their timeout back, so they will only have two timeouts used. Just that one angle looking down there sees the space in the knee. That is the rare Arian Foster fumble. He had only fumbled once in his previous 301 times handling the ball. And now, John, what a sudden swing of momentum in this game. This is huge for the Steeler offense. They have struggled in the red zone. Last week, 0 for 4 in the tight red zone against Cleveland. For a confidence builder, they need to push this ball across the goal line. As you heard, they got their timeout back, so there's one timeout remaining for the Steelers from the three, first and goal. Pitch it to Brown. He might throw it. He turns. He throws. End zone. Touchdown! Steelers lead with Lance Moore. You gotta be kidding me. You get your red zone offense going with a toss sweep, reverse pass with a left-handed flanker. That's a gutty call by Todd Haley and Mike Holmgren. We saw that on the practice field, Mike. I yep. wasn't sure if they were going to call that or they were just having fun. What a change of events here in Pittsburgh. Second pass completed by Brown this season. Throws the touchdown, squeeze him for the extra point, and just two minutes and five seconds. It goes from 13-0 Houston to 17-13 Pittsburgh. Wow. They bring him across like it's a sweep, and he's going to throw a crossing route back to Lance Moore. It's a toss sweep to Antonio Brown. No, it's a reverse pass to Lance Moore, the extra wing, New Orleans Saint. I have never seen that play call in the five-yard line ever. <laughs> Who knew he was left-handed? I hope Lance Moore puts that ball in a trophy case. I guarantee you he didn't catch any of those from Drew Brees in New Orleans. And you see Ben Roethlisberger throw the cut block in there as well. <laughs> on the back end of it, Watt was coming in, bearing down on Brown. Well, wait a minute, wait. We were teammates together at Central Michigan. <laughs> Brown Jones, was a wide receiver and Watt was a tight end. Woods Jones, the head coach in Tennessee, recruited both of these players at Central Michigan. Antonio Brown beats J.J. Watt on a reverse pass. Texans got to show some mental toughness here. They are shocked at the turn of events. It's the third completion in the career of Brown. He's thrown five passes now in his first for a touchdown. Of course, Pittsburgh fans so many years are used to seeing Antoine Randall L come out and throw passes out of that wide receiver spot. Minute three left. You're struggling in the red zone. Everybody's on your case, so you run a toss sweep with Antonio Brown. He's going to reverse his field, pick up a block from your two-time world champion quarterback, and throw a left-handed pass to Lance Moore. Unbelievable. Look at Ben Roethlisberger. It's that block on Whitney Merciless that made the play happen. Usually quarterbacks just kind of run up there and get in the way. He actually made contact, and it made a difference. Texans on the ropes. Still have three timeouts left. It's Patrick. Oh, it's off a hand. And into the hands of Kiesel. Brett Kiesel. One beard beats the other. First and goal. It's a Steeler avalanche. Pass rush. Put Ryan Fitzpatrick under duress, and good things will happen. Jason Worlds coming off the right side. Gets pressure on Fitzpatrick. Coming off your right side, Jason Worlds pushes Newton 
into the quarterback. He makes an awkward delivery. The ball is tipped, and there's Brett Kiesel. 36 years old. He got the tip and the deflection. What a play. <laughs> Unbelievable. It's the second time he's intercepted a pass. He's played over 150 games in the league. He had a long one back in 2010 against Tampa. And that time, Kiesel gives them the opportunity again inside the 10-yard line. Watch out for number 10 at the bottom of the screen. If they isolate him, they're throwing a high point fade to him. Davis Bryant left fire right Brown at the three and the Houston defense now needs to rally 45 seconds Steelers do have one timeout left the one they got back earlier a changing personnel here with the clock running in the red zone thinking they've got second and goal and third and goal and they feel as though they've got enough time here to get the personnel in to change the look these bunch formations they love Heath Miller their veteran tight end coming out of the stack. Brown and Bell. To the right of Roethlisberger. Bell is open. Touchdown. Boy, DJ Swearinger is upset with his teammates. They blow coverage. They line up in a bunch formation. They motion Le'Veon Bell out to his right. Nobody covered him. Inexcusable mistakes by the Texans in the last five minutes of the half. Here's Le'Veon Bell. Swearinger's looking for help. If nobody goes out there, you have to go get him, DJ Swearinger. Arguing and complaining, that doesn't do anybody any good. If someone makes a mistake, you have to cover your teammate. That time, Swearinger didn't get it done. 24 points in two minutes and 54 seconds. A lightning bolt from the Steelers. And these fans who were absolutely silent have been energized back to back to back to back scores Pittsburgh unbelievable red zone play selection and they stunned this Texan defense you have to be able to communicate and react and Le'Veon Bell has really hurt the Houston Texans with his receiving ability but it's the turnovers, Mike. It's the revival of this Steeler defense in the last several minutes that ignited the crowd, set their offense up with good field position, and that's what championship teams do. They have to capitalize on the turnovers. Good work by Pittsburgh. And also credit to whether it was New York or the replay official here to stop the game for a look at a play that the Steelers defense didn't get up claiming that they had a fumble other than the player who picked up the loose ball. That happens all the time when a loose ball comes. And it was a smart play because it gave them a clear recovery via replay. But New York or the replay official here buzzing down, stopping the game to get a look at that play. Crucial in that fumble that helped turn the tide here. What a half it's been for Le'Veon Bell. Not it as a receiver. He beat Cushing bad on an option route to the inside. Huge game. And then he slid across the formation, got a great block by Pouncey, his center, and hurt him real bad again. He just saw him come out of the backfield and catch that ball away from his body. I remember seeing Bell at Michigan State, Mike. I thought he could be an H-back or a tight end. These are natural hands, and Pittsburgh has exploded on Houston. The Texans get the ball to start the third. They go into the locker room stunned. Here's Chris with the Toyota Halftime Show. Stand by all cameras. It makes rock concerts look like tea parties. Yeah. What a show this man has put on tonight. Ryan Perry fights the football. Tear down this wall. Seahawks win the most bizarre finish you'll ever see. What a turnaround at the end of the first half. J.J. Watt, the Texans go from up 13-0 to down 24-13. Our IBM Insights. 
these teams are trying to get to 4-3 with a win, and 51% of those teams since the new playoff format in 2002, they make the playoffs. If you lose, you go to 3-4, and four, only 15% of the teams at 3-4 and four make it to the playoffs in the end. So that's the importance historically of the second half, but wow, what a finish to the first half, John. Let's go back and relive that uh, lightning quick turnaround. Less than three minutes, 24 points for Pittsburgh to stun Houston. So they get the sack and they get the ball back. Ben climbs up in the pocket, hits his rookie, Bryant. And then Arian Foster stripped from behind, first and goal Steelers. And they run a reverse pass with a left-handed flanker. That'll get your red zone going. And then Kiesel tips the ball and intercepts it himself. They motion to a no-back set. Texans blow a coverage and Le'Veon Bell Put an exclamation point on that flurry. They ran five plays on offense and scored 21 points. The last time in an NFL game that three touchdowns were scored in that short a period of time, you have to go back to Thanksgiving and the famous butt fumble game with the Patriots and the Jets in 2012. New England scored three touchdowns in that game in 52 seconds. Here, Pittsburgh doing it in very quick fashion to take the lead. 24 to 13. Houston gets the ball to start this third quarter. And Sean Sweezum boots it. Daniel Manning, who muffed a catch earlier that started the avalanche against Houston. But fumble this football. It's on the ground. And he scraps back and is able to get the recovery. Robert Golden. And Cortez Allen forced it out. It has been a tough night for Maddox. Well, he mishandles one. Now the ball's on the ground. He is down with possession, so it might not have been a fumble, but it did come loose. Or Bill O'Brien has to take control. Start the second half like they did the first half. They had a beautiful drive, great execution. Calm down, get the ball to Foster. One first down at a time. The 25 play action. Fitzpatrick turning. It's caught by C.J. Fedorowicz. Rookie tight end out of Iowa just shy of the first down. Here's Lisa Salters. Well, my Texans players seemed shell-shocked when they were coming off the field, and I asked Bill O'Brien, how do you regroup after that? And he said, you know what, we just talk about it as a staff. Go in and tell the guys there's plenty of football left. We started the game well, just had a horrible second quarter. I expected Mike Tomlin to be fired up as much as he was going into the locker room coming out. He was much more calm. He said he thought that that third down to Le'Veon Bell that really flipped the field. He said that flipped the switch for us, gave us energy. Now we just got to keep it going. Mike. And Sean Spence carrying some of that energy. Lisa stopping Arian Foster. Forward progress makes it no gain. And it's third in the yard. I don't understand. Sometimes you get in these up-tempo short yardage situations. It can backfire. Go right back to the up-tempo, right back to Foster, left side, and he can't get to the first down marker. Spence made a couple of nice plays. Timmons diving in with the penetration. Well, you and jump the line out. of scrimmage, you hop up there and you snap it, trying to catch the defense off guard. You're not quite sure who's where. You make a mistake up front. They had second and one. They used an up-tempo twice and got nothing. They had a punch for you in Oakland, Shane Leckler, one of the best in league history in terms of average. High one there, kicked 44 yards, ground from the 22. Returns it to the 34-yard line, a return of 12 yards. Houston hoping to get the ball back and get some momentum back. Couldn't do with offense, now what the defense will try. 77-year-old Dick LeBeau, longest tenured coordinator in the league, and Johnny continues to find the right things without the best talent necessarily. Well, he turned a game around when he started blitzing, and Lawrence Timmons made the big sack, and then it was Kiesel, number 99 on a stunt, rejecting another forward pass. They continued to blitz, and then they revved up their four-man rush. But the combination of blitzing, disguising, and veteran players delivering has been a big part of this Steeler defense's success. Let's see if Ben Roethlisberger can stay on the gas pedal. 
The offense did what it has not done the last few games, capitalize on red zone opportunities. They begin from the 34, and Le'Veon Bell, one of the heroes here tonight, looking to sneak outside. He's thrown to the ground by Jonathan Joseph and Brian Cushing. Gained about four. Boy, Justin Tuggle, the young linebacker, former quarterback at Boston College. That time, he met Le'Veon Bell. Watch the move that Bell puts on Tuggle. This is a 240-pound back at Michigan State who's down to 225. He's lighter and he's quicker. Boy, does he show it. Officially a gain of five. It's a fake to Bell and Roethlisberger. Looked deep and was covered. Check down one-on-one. -on -one. Bell. Swearinger comes to help Tuggle and limit the gain for Bell. Took a shot that time. Good coverage down the field. This Houston secondary has been gashed with big plays. Pittsburgh wanted to take a few shots down the field. They cleared the deep end out with Darius Hayward Bay. They tried to get Heath Miller on a deep cross. Good deep coverage by Kareem Jackson and Kendrick Lewis. Third and two. Pittsburgh spreads the field, but Houston stays in its base with four defensive backs. Roethlisberger releasing quickly. It's caught by LeGarrette Blunt with the spin move. For the first down near midfield. Good move by the big man, Blunt. How about these formations that Todd Haley is using? That time he brought Bell in short motion. He's going to be wide open on the left side of your screen, but they go to the other big back, LeGarrette Blunt. He does an excellent job against Tuggle again in the open field. The underneath coverage of the Texans is not good. Roethlisberger's hit his last six passes. Flea flicker here. Shot play. Antonio Brown. A lot of contact. Brown almost caused more of the contact as he and Kareem Jackson came together, but a good deep ball coverage sequence there by Houston. Well, these Steelers have been studying tape carefully. That time, Brown acted like a blocker. He let the ball handling develop, and he went downtown against Kareem Jackson, who's had his struggles in the last couple years. I like the no calls now more than I ever have, Mike. You like no calls when you're coaching? <laughs> Could help me, I did. <laughs> That's exactly right. We'll give it to Dre Archer. Okay. First run for the speedster Archer. Game's nearly nine. Nah, he's a third-round pick out of Kent State, inactive for a couple of weeks with an ankle injury. <laughs> Boy, is he fast. They have a creative package for Archer. That time they faked the bubble screen, and they handed it back to him on a draw play. He went to the combine, told everybody he was going to break the 40-yard dash time. He almost did. Chris Johnson breathed a sigh of release, relief, but watch his flash reel from Kent State. You'll see some real heat. Yeah. Johnson, the former Titans, now Jets running back, ran the 4.24, which was the fastest time at the combine. Archer coming in two one hundredths of a second behind that. Third and one shotgun run. It's LeGarrette Blunt very close to that first down marker. As Kendrick Lewis came in from the safety spot, put him down. And it is fourth down. He's marked short of the 40. He's pouncy. He's a bit shaken up. He's trying to come off the field there for a second. Roethlisberger keeping them out there, the Texans, so they can't change personnel. Almost forced the offside on Merciless. No snap. No play. A little surprised at that with LeGarrette Blunt. Play of the game. Play of the game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Five penalty. Still fourth down. This will be hard count. First penalty on the Steelers here tonight, a team that has been penalized a lot 
this year 57 times in their first six games so Brad wing an Australian who uses that Australian style kick to twist end over end try to pin Houston back deep a lot of movement here by Pittsburgh well, he is Australian, Mike. <laughs> so it comes naturally to him, Joe. Good day. At the spot of the first touch by the Steelers, it'll be down to the seven. An outstanding job by Wing. One of the more drastic flips you'll see in a football game. They have long drives, good drives, scoring points, and the turnovers after the three and out. The fumble, the pick, and where they happened especially. And they're coming out of halftime, the three and out. Now the Texans start backed up at their own seven. Ryan Fitzpatrick trying to find something. Will fire towards Hopkins. He catches it for a gain of 20 at 27. First down. That's what I want to see. Throw the ball at these Steeler corners. Andre Johnson and DeAndre Hopkins can do some damage against one-on-one -on -one coverage. Play action pass. He works away from rotation. Good anticipation. And catch by Hopkins. Actually, the game 21. Now Foster left. Just shy of the 35-yard line for Arian Foster, who had a very good start to this game with 73 yards in the first quarter. And Andre Johnson, I'm sure, is telling Bill O'Brien, hey, Bryce McCain is covering me. Bryce McCain, the ex-Houston Texan, came over to Pittsburgh. Wasn't good enough for the Texans. Here he is as a Steeler. I wouldn't be surprised if they take advantage of that matchup. They should know something about it. Staying on the ground. And Foster close to the first down. Yard shy. Be third and one. Tackle by Thomas. Here Mid comes that fullback, Mike. I like this. Jay Prosh back in short yardage. They tried to use the tempo quick cadence in the last possession. It backfired. Go to your best blockers, your best Game personnel two. grouping, and hand the ball to Arian Foster. Foster slip as he was trying to get to the block by Cross, and it will be back to back three and outs for the Texans. The short yardage defense of the Steelers has rejected the Houston running game. Penetration off the right side, and Foster just slipped. Antonio Brown back to the Steelers. Back to Leckler, it's a fake, running it up the middle is blue for the first down. Had to give Bill O'Brien credit. He goes, I'm not going to get shut out all night on these short yardage calls. Alfred Blue able to take the snap and go forward. A little <laughs> St. Louis magic rubbing off after the Rams' success with the fakes yesterday. Snaps it to the up back, and they just wedge block it up front. They surge for a big first down. Pittsburgh's loading the front, Mike. They're going to make Fitzpatrick throw the football against single coverage. It's been that way for a while. Seven-yard gain keeps the drive going. Play action for the 44. Fitzpatrick with a collapsing pocket back to Hopkins. It's another first down. Going after Randall Gay with DeAndre Hopkins. That time Bryce McCain covered Andre Johnson on a double move like a glove. But this loaded box of the Steelers. They're trying to take away Arian Foster, and they're going to make Fitzpatrick throw to win tonight. There's eight defenders in the box. Like you said, it makes you wonder why not take a shot with Andre Johnson. Doesn't stretch the field the way he used to. Fitzpatrick comes back to his left, and once again, it's Hopkins who spun by William Gay after a gain of five. Down to the Pittsburgh 40. DeAndre Hopkins who came in second on this team behind Andre Johnson in receptions. Tonight has been targeted four times, or four catches, I should say. Second and five. Black in the play. 
CJ Fedorowicz over on that left side along with Dwayne Brown. False start. False 87. Start. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. And yeah, the rookie is guilty. Fedorowicz has played like a rookie. He's made mistakes as a blocker, as a pass protector, and he's out of the football game. Bill O'Brien not going to tolerate that on an early down in that field position. Races the first down completion, and it's second and ten. Five of the pattern for Fitzpatrick. Takes off, and he trips and falls. And he'll be given most of it since he didn't go to slide there, so a gain of about four and a half. Dick LeBeau does a great job disguising these coverages. You think it's a single safety, and then on the snap of the ball, watch him roll back into a double zone. Pull him out of Mitchell. They work extremely well together. Remember, Polo Malo's working with a new running mate. He had Ryan Clark, outstanding safety, covering for him for a long time. Now he and Mitchell are working together, and Polo Malo has become the communicator of the two. <laughs> That's very different. They've missed on their last six third down opportunities. Needing to get to the 35, Fitzpatrick. Complete and then drop. Graham has it separated. This Bill O'Brien offense, you remember at New England, at Penn State, they used the tight end significantly as pass receivers. They just haven't gotten much production from Garrett Graham, C.J. Fedorowicz, Ryan Griffin. Just hasn't happened, and let's see if Leckler can pin him back. Six-time All-Pro. Spins one down there. Oh, that is perfect. Down at the one. 15 years, Mike. Shane Leckler using that Aussie-style punt you were talking about. Pins the Steelers deep. Le'Veon Bell and company trying to continue to add to this yardage total, boosted by that surge at the end of the second. Big matchup, J.J. Watt against Ben Roethlisberger tonight. Here's Watt's evening. Done a lot of different things from a lot of different positions. Here he beats DeCastro on an inside move. Then he used his speed to beat him to the outside and recovered a fumble. Whitney Merciless got some pressure. And here against the double team, he gets his first sack of the night. See if he can make a disruptive play while the Steelers are backed up. Throw the quick one to Brown, who slips and falls. Again, there were showers earlier. We've seen players slipping throughout the second and third quarter. It's a built-in answer versus a loaded box. And here's Bryant, number 10, checking into the game. Remember, he's got a limited package of plays while he continues to learn this offense. Sometimes he's a decoy. Other times he'll clear out a deep zone. But at all times, keep an eye on Bryant because he's big and very fast. That time, Roethlisberger got his own guy to move. Blunt. That's Full start, Steelers. 76. Offense, half the distance of the goal. Second down. That's something you practice every year. You put the backed-up offense in. You tell your offense, hey, every time we're backed up, we're going to use a hard count. And you practice it, and you coach it, and you do it every single week. And it's amazing how many teams jump off sides when they're backed up after all this rehearsal. That's inexcusable. Oh, Mike Adams saw blunts as well. A quick count here out of his own end zone. Ben, deep shot, downfield. Great effort by Martavis Bryant to go up and get it. Incomplete. We covered Jonathan Joseph for Houston. Well, Jonathan Joseph, if you were going to trust one of these Texans in one-on-one -on -one coverage, he'd be the one. The ex-Cincinnati Bengal has always had the ability to find the ball in the blind spot. You're running man for man, you're playing the offensive player, you gotta find the ball in flight late. Nice work. Gotta be real careful here if you're the Steelers. Do not hold the ball with J.J. Watt. He's had success against DeCastro at right guard. Darius Hayward Bay is in the slot at the top of the screen, third and nine. Roethlisberger, pocket collapses, throws, and it's caught by Hayward Bay. Rare appearance, big appearance. First down for Pittsburgh. Great throw by Ben back up. That's the only top 10 pick on this Steeler roster. Darius Hayward Bay, the ex-Oakland Raider. 
makes a tremendous traffic reception to keep the drive alive. You've always talked about how hard that job is. Throw off the cape. You haven't done much tonight. Go in there and make a play. Hard to do. Hayward Bay in his sixth year. Former Raider top ten pick. John spoke about a moment ago. Comes up big now. Blunt stumbles on through. Get to the 24-yard line. Blunt with the handle. First down gain of five for Garrett Blunt. Steelers using a lot of different players tonight. You see 46. Will Johnson checking out of the game. They have had a lot of success with one back and three receivers. And they're back to that two tight end set, which they're known for. Spaeth and Miller shifting to the right. Blue 80. Blue Second and five, just pull up and throw it to Brown. Up his head there for first down. Antonio Brown over five catches tonight, over 50 yards again tonight. A little controversy that they got him the ball late in the Cleveland game to keep that streak going. But and tonight, 23 straight games with at least five catches and 50 yards, and that's never been done before in the league. I didn't know they kept track of that stat. Not many do. That's why I hesitate to call it an NFL record necessarily. It's not. I mean, not deep. <laughs> Your notes are getting awful long, Mike. Blue 20. Blue 20. On the 30-yard line it is Blunt. Bouncing to the outside will gain two to the 32-yard line. That's one thing you want to do against J.J. Watt. You want to bring in multiple tight ends, and you want to run the football repeatedly. Try to wear him out. Double-team schemes, tackles, and tight ends. Try to exhaust him so you can throw the ball on these second and third and long situations. Watt rarely comes off the field, but if you are one-dimensional trying to throw it all the time, you're playing right into his hand. They bring Dree Archer into the back, and he's a small back in the pistol, so Roethlisberger obscures him from the defense. You got to go find him. And Whitney Merciless has had a very good game, does just that. Loss of two. He put Archer in the pistol behind Ben Roethlisberger. I'm surprised the Texans can even see him. An injured player for the Steelers. It's their tackle beat him already. We've had an injury to Marcus Gilbert. One tackle in this game. And Mike Adams has been playing for a while. And now Beecham on the other side is hurt. And the last available lineman, Cody Wallace, gets ready. ESPN's Monday Night Football is brought to you by TD Ameritrade. NFL.com slash mobile. Stream live local Sunday and primetime games on your phone. And GMC, enter the Never Say Never sweepstakes for a chance to win a 2015 GMC vehicle at GMC.com slash NFL. 40th anniversary of the 1974 Steelers Championship team. The victory over the Vikings. At, uh, Part of the great run of Steeler titles over the years. The six Super Bowls that they have won. Well, 9 and 10, 13 and 14, 40 and 43. So Beecham walks off the field with the injury, which really shakes up the offensive line. But very aware of Ben Roethlisberger, the play clock was reset one second longer than the game clock in the quarter. So Pittsburgh doesn't have to run a play. The third quarter comes to an end. Mike Tomlin's going to ask, since it's the end of the quarter, can I get my player Beecham back in if he's okay? Very aware on the Steelers' sideline. They're up 11 after three. ESPN, celebrating 45 years of Monday Night Football. The confluence where the Allegheny and the Monongahela Rivers meet to form the Ohio. Right at the Three Rivers. Three Rivers Stadium used to be right over there. Now that stadium's gone. And, of course, it's Heinz Field where the Steelers had one of those incredible quarters, one of those incredible stretches. Three touchdowns in 73 seconds, 24 points in less than three minutes to stun the Texans. 13-0 game became 24-13. After a scoreless third, we go to the fourth. Mike Tirico, John Gruden, Lisa Salters with you here in Pittsburgh. Got to be real careful here with this call. Expect a screen or a quick pass 
couple injured linemen for the Steelers. But as we said, Beecham able to come back at the end of the quarter, so Pouncey doesn't have to go out and play tackle. They're back to the configuration from the prior play. And the Roethlisberger pass to Moore. That might be a fumble. It's ruled down on the sideline. And taking it is Kendrick Lewis towards the end zone for the touchdown. Now we have one whistle from the back official who has come in here. The official on the near side did not whistle it dead as Moore reaches and he's down before the ball comes out. So all is clean there. We have a fumble with a recovery by the defense, and then the player stepped out of bounds. First down, Houston. Well, clearly looks like he's down with control of the ball. It would be a yard short of the first down. It would be fourth down. And because it's a turnover, there's no need to challenge. It would be automatically reviewed. No question this will be challenged and be reviewed. Moore's knee is clearly down. Bill O'Brien has a coach up in the press box on top of this. Because they, on the field they called it a turnover, so it's an automatic look. They had to get to the 40-yard line for the first down. I believe Walt Coleman will reverse this, Mike. Of course, these challenges always made me nervous. The previous play is under review. You go back to the tuck game with Walt Coleman. It's like every time you say that, it's hard not to laugh as you say it. Hard for you. <laughs> Next Monday night, Cowboys and Redskins renew their terrific NFC East rivalry. Whereas Dallas 6-1 atop the NFC East. Washington 2 and 5. Colt McCoy will start Monday night in Texas. Review, and here's Walt Coleman who has taken a look. After reviewing the play, the runner's knee was down prior to the ball coming loose. He's down by contact. It'll be fourth down at the 39-yard line. The spot was the next interesting point as Moore stretched out to try to get the first down, and he was deemed to be a full yard short having to get to the 40-yard line. So Pittsburgh will be out to punt the ball with Brad Wing. That was a nice tackle by Kareem Jackson. Sometimes that gets lost in all these replays, but the Texans needed to tackle better to have a chance tonight. That was a nice play by Jackson. Into punt. Martin back for the Texans. Same motion with Will Allen, who returns back to his spot. We'll clue to see what the Texans are up to. And Wing did not hit it well. Fielded by Allen. Outside the 25-yard line. So better than Houston thought they'd get it. So DeMarco Murray, as we get set to see Dallas next week, he has really taken this thing out of 300 plus yard lead the running backs in tonight's game are second and third in the league and Arian Foster and Le'Veon Bell but it gives you an appreciation of how good Murray has been Foster did miss a game plus because of injury earlier this year but 9-13 DeMarco Murray seven games played they're blocking people too fun to watch a physical running game and the commitment to it Murray won 28 yesterday, seventh straight game of 100 yards, now an NFL record. Fitzpatrick first down into traffic, trying to get it to Andre Johnson. Very well covered. Bad decision. You throw a slant or any inside breaking route late against the Pittsburgh Steelers, player safety will be an issue. Lucky that ball wasn't intercepted. Ryan Fitzpatrick has been awful quiet. Expect another blitz from Dick LeBeau. Blood is in the water. For man rush, Fitzpatrick fires towards Johnson, who was being grabbed at. And the flag comes down against Cortez Allen. Allen talks. Pass in number 28, defense. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. First down. 
Cortez Allen has really struggled. Take a look at it. I can see it. They rewarded the Allen with a big contract. Ike Taylor, the longtime great corner, still injured, and people have had success at Allen. Six times he's been penalized this year. It's Patrick first down, a pump to try to take a deeper shot, and it is brought in. They have gone to Andre Johnson here three times and twice with Allen covering him. That's a double move, a slant and go, and Allen ran away from it. And if you run away from Andre Johnson, Fitzpatrick throws it on the back shoulder. Beautiful execution. It's no huddle, and he's out there again covering Johnson. At the Pittsburgh 39. Foster. Hasn't had that cutback lane here, John, which is such a trademark of Foster's runs at a play that the Steelers have struggled with this season. Been a nice job since the first quarter stopping Arian Foster. That stretch play is hard to stop. It can bounce to the outside. He can press it. He can cut it all the way back with incredible quickness and vision. Second and six. It says Allen on the ropes over there. Let's see if they continue to go at him. Covering Andre Johnson. Fitzpatrick stepping up, throwing, incomplete. Try to get it to DeAndre Hopkins on the other side. And William Gay was there in the coverage, and Stephon Tuitt got a little pressure in there for Pittsburgh. Stephon Tuitt, second rounder out of Notre Dame. You see, Brett Kiesel has checked back into the game. Believe it or not, Kiesel has applied the most pressure of anyone on this Steeler defense. 36 years old, Mike Tomlin brought him back for these kinds of situations. He's going to try to push the pocket and set up somebody coming off the edge. It's an amoeba defense, all these Steelers walking around. Play clock at two, play clock at one. Fitzpatrick gets it off and throws open Andre Johnson to the 15 yard line in the red zone, Houston. Even Pittsburgh was confused. They only rushed three. They have eight men in coverage and nobody covers Andre Johnson. A terrible mistake by the Steeler defense. So Terrence Garvin, the linebacker out of West Virginia, mostly a special teamer was out there for Pittsburgh. At the 15, Texans down 11. 12 and a half to go. Foster for two to the left. Boy, it's such a cat and mouse game in this single back running attack. Bill O'Brien calls a play to Ryan Fitzpatrick. He walks to the line of scrimmage and he sees where Dick LeBeau positions Troy Polamalu. If Polamalu's to the right, they run to the left or vice versa. Troy Polamalu, 33 years old, didn't miss a snap last year, continues to play at a high level for the Steelers. 9 4, 51, 51. Foster just hit the 100-yard mark for this game. Standing next to Fitzpatrick. From the 13, Foster releases. Fitzpatrick for Johnson in the end zone. Incomplete. But he had him. Bill O'Brien uses a bunch formation. Tries to get Andre Johnson to the corner one-on-one -on -one against Gay. Got to give him a chance, Mike. You have to give Andre Johnson a ball that he can go up and play that time. Fitzpatrick, fourth row. Like the catch he made the first touchdown against Indianapolis last Thursday. Like he caught the back half of the ball almost. Got to trust the window. William Gaines covering him near side. Third and eight. Steelers changed their defense last second. Fitzpatrick looking. It's a crosser. And Damaris Johnson couldn't hang on to the ball. The field goal could make it a one-possession game, make it an eight-point game, and they'll try it here. Boy, a great disguise again by the Steelers. They fool them, and they get to the alternate receiver, Damaris Johnson, who has to make this catch. Here's Bullock. For his third. Field goal of the night. 31. Three in the 30s. It's an eight-point game. Drive. Could have been kept alive, but the marriage Johnson couldn't hang on. ESPN is
Monday Night Football is brought to you by Navy Federal, serving the armed forces and their families. LiftMaster, no other garage door opener opens your world like a LiftMaster. ESPNFanshop.com, powered by Dick's Sporting Goods. It's been a couple of years since Monday night, it's come to Pittsburgh, so great to be back in this city. Surrounding areas, neighborhoods, great resurgence. Steel Town and many of the steel mills closed and some difficult days, but uh, there's been a lot of regeneration and rebuilding in this area. Good to see. Three and three Texans, three and three Steelers. Eight point game and J.J. Watt in the defense. Take their shot at Roethlisberger one more time. Yeah, everybody keeps calling for J.J. to make a memorable play. Bat a ball, beat a double team, do something, but it's times like this where they missed to Davian Clowney, their number one overall pick, who hasn't made much of an impact at all. But it's had to be all J.J. Watt, and it's hard to rely on one player week in, week out. Randy Bullock with the kickoff for Houston. That's the yard deep. Here comes Tree Archer. Good hit at the 18-yard line by Akeem Dent. Second straight. There's Clowney. Warmed up. Tried to give the sense that he was going to play tonight. But uh, the Texans said, no, not yet. Well, he practiced a few snaps on Friday. If I'm Bill O'Brien, I'm not playing him until he goes out there and has a great Wednesday practice, Thursday practice, and Friday practice and shows me and all his teammates that he's ready to go. But time's running out on the Texans. Can't beat J.J. Watt all the time. Clowney's here to play. They need to get him out there soon. Number one overall pick injured against Washington. Limited number of snaps. About two dozen. That's it this year. From the 18-yard line, here's Le'Veon Bell with the run up the middle. Swearinger hits him. They drive Swearinger to the 24-yard line. What's well, been rare, really, over the last 19, 20 years, that you take a defensive player number one overall, Courtney Brown, Mario Williams, who the Texans took, and then Clowney eight years later. We were there at the Outback Bowl. He made that spectacular play to end his sophomore season. His junior season, lots of questions about his desire. Or was he saving himself for the pros? Those questions remain. He's had a number of injuries the last two years, very little production on the field, and it's frustrating for him and for everybody that roots for the Texans. The 24, a fake to Brown. Roethlisberger right back that way, and it's incomplete. And we get to third and four. Here comes another army of Houston Texans. Look at the substitutions that Houston has to use. They struggle in underneath coverage. So they use specialized defenders to do that. They bring in specialized rushers to help J.J. Watt. And they have six defensive backs, their dime package, to try to cover these receivers. Hey, face, face. Mike, and they've been confused a couple hey, times, just yeah. as they are here, Mike. John Simon, 51, 12 men on the field. That's going to be a first down. I was about to say, Mike Muhammad came out. It's here John Simon. On defense, five-yard penalty. And a first down. What well, happened at the end of the first half, Swearinger in the defense blew a coverage. That's an error that takes your breath away if you're a coach. You give the Steelers a first down in a 24-16 football game. Bill O'Brien can't like that at all. Good out, good out. They are without A.J. Boye, who has an illness that the Texans are terming. He has not played since the second quarter. First down run for Bell. Got a good block from his tight end, Heath Miller. And Le'Veon Bell makes a pay after the penalty, stretching it out a yard shy of midfield. Boy, they ran a counter play off the left side, and you said it, Mike. Heath Miller, he does more than just catch passes. He pulls with David DeCastro. He kicks out the force, and Le'Veon Bell catches it. Le'Veon Bell, he looks like Curtis Martin, the way he's following his blockers. Great patience. The former Jets back, the Hall of Famer, that was his idol. He loved Curtis Martin. His whole family was Steeler fans. Bell told us, I hated the Steelers growing up. I like the Jets. I was a huge Curtis Martin guy. Now he loves the Steelers. His family's great. Great fortune to have him play for the team they rooted for. With Garrett Blunt for a couple of yards. I'd like to have this as your complimentary back. Garrett Blunt. That's my favorite name for a big back. 
blunt. He averages almost six yards a carry. He can physically wear you out. He did that to Carolina earlier, the former 1,000-yard rusher of the Buccaneers. Not a big part of this pass offense. Usually when he's in the game, he's there to run it. In 118 on 10 carries, best win the Steelers have had the week three win at Carolina. Nowhere to go. Watt chasing. And here comes the rest of the posse with him. And Romeo Cronell, he's been around too long. They know Blunt's a ball carrier. Take a look at J.J. Watt. He's going to miss him the first time. He's going to stay after him and find a way to get an assist the second time. you got to really admire the effort, Mike. That's why he got the big contract. Forget about all the sacks and the greatness that he puts forth on the field. It's the effort. It's the character. It's the work ethic. It's the relentless passion that he has. And they rewarded him big time, and he deserves it. Six years, 100 million highest defensive contract in the league, 52 million guaranteed, and nobody complained about it on his side. He's earned it. Roethlisberger stepping up, in trouble, spinning, throwing. Miller with a flag down. Heath Miller, three shy of the first down. But let's see what the flag's about. It's always illegal contact on these late deliveries, Mike. I think it's going to go against Houston. We will see. Holding, number 25, defense. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. You see Watt in some pain as he was coming off, and now athletic training staff, the Texans looking at him. You're going to see J.J. Watt come underneath and... To landed on that shoulder awkwardly. Yes, he was taking down Roethlisberger. Second penalty on this drive that has given the Steelers a first down with 8.18 left. Three going deep for Roethlisberger. Crossing his ground. Oh. Right up. Able to hold on. That's a great call by Todd Haley. J.J. Watt out of the game. Clowney's not active. Drop back the pass and go deep. The Roethlisberger's trying to rush into the line because the Texans' DBs are telling the sidelines a challenge, and Bill O'Brien will here. When does he gain full possession? He pulls it back into his body there. And this rule to catch on the field. He goes to the ground all the way through the process and maintains possession of the ball. Houston is challenging the ruling on the field of a completed catch. Texans will challenge here with 7.55 to go. In consultation with the league in New York, let's see what Walt Coleman saw. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands, completed catch. Houston will be charged with a first-team timeout. It stands not confirmed. It was called a completion on the field. Both feet do come down inbounds. The only question you have here is possession. His hand stays under the ball throughout the process from that angle. You see it pinned to his leg, thigh, groin area, and it doesn't move, and he goes all the way through and never loses the ball. That's, That's a heck great, of a catch. That's one of the great catches I've seen. Hands in his face. I don't know if the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man would have caught that. What an effort by Antonio Brown. This drive kept alive twice by penalties for first down at the 16, Pittsburgh. Oh, boy. Roethlisberger, end zone shot for Brown. Holds on. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Oh, Boye was hurt. Boye came back. And Todd Haley said, get after Boye. Double move. You have your best receiver against a young cornerback. And Brown beats him bad. This is one heck of a receiver. He's only 5'10", 185 pounds. But boy, does he play big. We're going to have to replay that, too, I'm yeah. sure. If you're really looking at that, as that second foot came down. 
John, it's always talked about when the fans are sitting in these showers. Uh, don't feel like sitting through another review, but let's watch this one more time here. As that foot comes down, so hard to tell there if he ends up touching the white line, but his awareness of the sideline, he slowed down to give Ben a chance. Ruled on the field a touchdown. Is there anything definitive to see his foot touching the paint in the end zone that would take it off the board? This is very, very close. Here comes the second one trying to come down there, but his shoe obscures it. And then you look back at the spot where, it, where he really took a divot, to be honest. And from this angle in, you cannot tell. It looks like it's rubbing up against it, but you have to see it for certain to change the ruling on the field. He there feels like to me he's touching the white line, but we'll go down and we'll look at the divot. This, you, this isn't part of the review. You try to determine by looking at that what happened or didn't happen. Because the grass was kicked up from the divot. That's what's obscuring the uh, edge of the sideline there. I don't think he can overturn this. Here's Walt Coleman. Again. After reviewing the play, the receiver's left foot was out of bounds. It's an incomplete pass. It'll be second down at the 16-yard line. Let's go back down to the to the divot here, John. Right there. Good Are we? use of spider cam. See, it's good to have the golf training. We look for the divot, see where the divot was, but. As it broke the line, they're not allowed to use that with the replay portion of it. But I used to really like football, Mike. I thought you loved football. Oh, I do. Back to the action. What a great effort, though, and a fine route. Texans dodged a bullet. And you were saying, go back to the receiver coaching days, the sideline awareness of Brown. He slowed himself. They gave Ben every chance to get it to him. So it goes down at his incomplete. And it's second and 10 at the 16. Okay. Pressure, trying to spin away from Jackson. He pitched it to Bell, who was caught behind the line. First Watt and then Crick able to finish it. It started with the corner pressure by Kareem Jackson. Corner blitz. There's got to be a side adjustment, or Le'Veon Bell has to come across and pick this up. You're going to see Kareem Jackson with a clean shot at Roethlisberger and the size of Big Ben again allows him to find a way to get rid of this football he's just too big and too strong for the undersized Kareem Jackson big Ben loss of six it's third and 16 get a first down at the six yard line this burger pumps and throws it complete Brown right past Joseph on his feet Yard shy of the first down. Boy, is he quick. This is Jonathan Joseph, the best corner on the Texans roster. He starts to the inside, breaks back to the outside, stop, start, accelerate. Antonio Brown, that's how he practices. If you're a young receiver, try to get the Steelers training camp next year and watch this kid practice. Full speed, finishes everything. Mike Tomlin ran down to get a look down the sideline to see where the ball was, how far back it was. It took the kicking team about 10 extra seconds to get on the field. They can take a delay a game and not impact this field goal much. As Sweezum gets out there, it's going to cost them five. Play a game. Play a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Boy, Sweezum has really found a home here. Coming off a great year last year, 30 for 32. They reward him with the big contract, and this is as big a field goal as he's had this year. Mike Tomlin in conversation with the headlines. He's out. I'm just asking for the spot there. It took you so long to tell me it was a yard shy. It cost us the five. So instead of 25, the field goal attempt is 30. And unaffected. Weezum knocks it through, and the Steelers score for the first time in the second half, make it a two-score game, just under six minutes left. 
Pittsburgh leading by 11. A lot of the work of Antonio Brown. The blue dots are where he has caught the ball here tonight. The three on the left by the line of scrimmage, and then from 10 yards in, he's caught most of his passes. A few attempts to the right, those X's that are incomplete. But that big play on the sideline, John, there, the throw to the left sideline, where he catches so many passes downfield. Big part of his eight receptions here tonight for 85 yards. And impactful catches on a long drive in the fourth. He's a lot more than just the go-to receiver of the Pittsburgh Steelers. He epitomizes consistency and production. What a performance tonight. Nine play, 70 yard drive to answer for the field goal. Here's Danielle Manning returning and met by Antoine Blake. The special team play for the Steelers. Look at Antonio Brown tonight. What a performance. Roethlisberger scrambles. Brown keeps it alive. First down, Pittsburgh. Then it's a reverse pass by Antonio Brown. He throws a touchdown pass. How about this catch? One of the ages. He looks like Spider-Man. And he beats Jonathan Joseph. Stop, start, acceleration. He's a rare football player. They're lucky they have him signed long term here. Down 11, two timeouts left. We'll see if Houston goes no huddle. The we'll start with Andre Johnson takes it to the 20-yard line. Texans need to score twice here in the last five and a half of this one. If you're just joining us, they jumped out to a 13-0 lead, had control of this game midway through the second. Then a series of mistakes, turnovers, allowed Pittsburgh to close the half with 24 points in the last 256, or in 256. The end of that second quarter. Second four, the pressure is picked up. Fitzpatrick holds it, throws it, crossing. Hopkins to midfield. DeAndre Hopkins lost the football. Pulled out by Mike Mitchell, and Polamalu has it for Pittsburgh. The Steeler defense comes up with a big play. That is bad football by DeAndre Hopkins. Put the ball away. Bill O'Brien has seen his team self-destruct, and Mike Mitchell, another ex-Oakland Raider, strips the ball, and there's Troy Polamalu to recover it. That's a great job by Mike Mitchell. Mike Tomlin told us he was the only Steeler that played winning football last week in Cleveland on defense. He's starting to get a feel for this Pittsburgh Steeler defense, and the one thing he can do is run and hit and find a football. He just made his biggest play as a Pittsburgh Steeler. Polamalu sneaks in there, comes up with a takeaway for the 39th time. In his Steeler career, they put Troy up on the big screen, and fans wave their towels in appreciation that's two weeks in a row the Texans have fumbled the ball mm -hmm. in this situation Andre Johnson last week and now it's Hopkins so up 11 Pittsburgh will lean on the running game here and Le'Veon Bell takes it to the 33 yard line this Le'Veon Bell the deeper he gets the more real estate it allows him to read his cuts. Now, he's conscious of that. He knows the deeper I get, the more I'm telling the defense it's a run. But his vision for a young back is rare, Mike. Texans take a timeout here. As Bell sitting on 11 carries for 56 yards, but did a lot of good work in the air. He has 144 total yards here on the night. Well, John, we're kind of getting to that point where we're separating a little bit, especially in the AFC. Denver so impressive last night. Congratulations to Peyton Manning on setting the all-time mark. They play San Diego on Thursday. The Colts, Patriots, Ravens, all these teams have five wins already. So you want to stay somewhat close because if those five teams keep rolling, they don't get an injury, it's only going to be one of the spots for a playoff team in the AFC. So Pittsburgh trying to stay above 500, knowing they have two of those teams. Indianapolis and Baltimore coming here to Heinz Field the next two Sundays. Antonio Brown. As long as those two are on the same page, it works. These are all running plays. It's the third time Ben has picked the ball up and just 
thrown it out there to Antonio Brown. You load up the box to stop Bell. You play single coverage, and Roethlisberger trusts his receiver to win every time, and they're laughing about it. That's too easy. Completed. They get the first down, and Houston has run out of timeouts, taking their third here. Ben Roethlisberger and Antonio Brown are in total sync tonight. Ben knows it's a one-step. Get it and rip it out there, and Antonio will cross the corner's face every time. It's one of the reasons Antonio Brown has as many catches as he does. I mean, he had well over 100 last year. He's on his way to another monster season, and Ben Roethlisberger has played error-free football for the most part again tonight. Brown had 102 catches as a freshman at Central Michigan when J.J. Watt was his teammate and the tight end for the Chippewa. Dell left. He's got to stay in bounds. Houston cannot stop the clock. Exhausted their timeouts. And this one will take us under four minutes. A little Steeler defense that has struggled not just this year, John, but in the last couple of years enforcing turnovers. Able to get three here tonight. Big part of the equation. Half their total in the first six games happening here. Keep an eye on Bell's depth. The deeper he is, the bigger the tendency is for a running play. He's back there, eight yards. They are going to throw. And it's incomplete, and I never understand why people do this. Houston has no timeouts. You have an 11-point lead. You have just given them 44 seconds. I don't understand why people do that. Neither do I, especially when you have a premier running back, a bunch of high draft choices, and this is the time you want to be an offensive lineman. You got a lead. You got the ball. Hey, let's run it. Let's physically take it to them. I don't understand that. And it's a low percentage pass to a guy who's to never played in the fourth quarter in the NFL. Throw a screen, throw a hitch, throw something that you know you're going to complete. Gift for Houston, third and nine. And Roethlisberger's pass here is a catch. So the full 40 will run at the 22-yard line. The field will be right about 40 yards. And just like we've said all night, the only thing the Texans can hope for is J.J. Watt blocks a kick, which he's done before. There's just not enough juice, enough playmakers on this Texan defense. We've talked about Clowney's absence. But you have to compliment the Steelers in the job they've done against J.J. Watt in the second half. Pittsburgh going to run it all the way down here. And Mike Tomlin standing next to the official take a timeout. At 3.09 remaining. We mentioned Indianapolis Sunday, then Baltimore next Sunday night for this Pittsburgh team in the stretch of games at home. And then they go on the road to see the Jets in Tennessee. We'll have them on a Monday night in week 11 in Nashville. Houston goes to Tennessee here this week. On Sunday, they're trying to stay close enough to Indianapolis in the AFC South. They lost the five-pointer last Thursday to the Colts. And we'll visit them the third to last weekend of the season. Good from 44 and 30. Squeeze them from 40 to take the lead to 14. Money. Solid season for Sean Sweezen, 30 to 16. Roethlisberger, three minutes and four seconds away from a victory. If he gets the victory, it would be win number 99 as a starter. And then next Sunday night, he'll be trying to go for win 100 in what will be his 150th start. That's tonight and then next week. If that happens, 100 wins in the first 150 starts. Brady, Montana, and Terry Bradshaw. That's why the Steelers 
are going to be in the thick of things until the end. If their defense can get a couple turnovers and play like they did in the last half with this quarterback, anything can happen. He's proven that. It's funny, John, that Bradshaw is just forever in the minds of so many in our generation as the Steelers quarterback. And nobody, but the records because of this passing era have changed with Roethlisberger having all these records. And if Ben stays healthy the rest of the year, he'll have started 158 games, exactly as many as Terry Bradshaw started with the Steelers. But at the end of the day, all the math and stats are great. We know the one stat that matters the most. Terry won the four Super Bowls. Ben's trying to... Yeah. Get number three at some point here in his career now at age 32. And in fairness to Ben, he's played with a lot of different Steelers. Santana, Holmes, Bettis, they're long gone. He's breaking in a new cast of characters. It's a credit to him. Modern football. Danielle batting on the return for Houston. Try to reverse his field and had nowhere to go. Ross Ventrone comes up with a special teams tackle. You just have to wonder if you're a Houston Texan fan, what is the long-term solution at quarterback? Ryan Fitzpatrick has played at times well tonight, but what is Ryan Mallett's future as a Texan? He came over from New England. Coach O'Brien coached him. George Godsey, the offensive quarterback coach, Coach Mallett. Here's a young man with talent. He's thrown four passes in his career. What does he have? When will we find out? Houston, no timeouts, down 14. Fitzpatrick with nothing available. Just runs forward to the 20-yard line. With some Spider Cam, our coverage from Spider Cam tonight, brought to you by DirecTV. Bill O'Brien telling us that Mallet will play at some point. Still working on the, the touch and the accuracy inside of 10 yards. We know from his days first at Michigan that at Arkansas, big, strong player, powerful arm. Patrick Pass is on time on the sideline to Andre Johnson. Caught at the 42-yard line, but we have a flag down back by the quarterback. Personal foul, running the passer, number 92, defense. 15 yards from the end of the play, first down. It's on James Harrison and will take the Texans into Steeler territory. That's a good call. Ball's gone, you got to pull off. And John, the problem with a penalty like that takes him to the 43, and now they're a shot play away from getting to the end zone. If you can do that, especially on this side of the two-minute warning, it really does give you an opportunity to recover an onside kick and keep the game alive. That's why Mitchell and Polamalu are talking to each other on that deep end. They're going to run the middle linebacker through with these two deep safeties being very cautious here. There is Garvin bailing deep. So he'll take the check down to Arian Foster, who made game miss. And then he's taken down by Lawrence That's Timmons. The clock continues to turn, and we'll see if Houston can squeeze in one more before the two-minute warning. Clock stopped here. I thought I saw the official wind it. Apparently, the other official came in and stopped it. To my mistake. Stuck on 213. It's Troy Polamalu, Mike. He might not be as fast as he was in 2010 when he was all over the place, but he's mentally faster than at any point in his career. Steelers rush four. Fitzpatrick again using the middle with the tight end Garrett Graham. Side the 20 to the 17 yard line. And we'll hit the two minute warning. The two minutes left. Texans trying for a score and recover an onside kick. Hey, what's up? I'm John Butchergrass in Pittsburgh. Scott Van Pelt is back in Bristol. Coming up on the GMC post-game report, men wearing makeup and talking about football. Steve Young, Trent Dilfer, Ray Lewis, especially angry. They have some NFL rants. Top plays from Week 7 as well. It's all coming up on Sports Center after the game. Michael. All right, John, thank you. Great to have John in here this week. Something for our pal Stuart Scott. 
Uchi's dad was a longtime season ticket holder. John came to many games back in the old Three Rivers days, so a great throw for him to be here. The Steelers try to close this one out against the Texans. You go back and look at those scoring drives. When they scored those three touchdowns in lightning fashion, two plays, one play, and three play. Check down pass to Le'Veon Bell in the second quarter when the Steelers were trailing 13-3, and then the shot to Martavis Bryant gave them energy, and then the Texans turnovers really flipped the game in rapid fashion. Linda begins with L. Block to the left. First and ten. Fitzpatrick throwing. Andre Johnson went up and almost made a spectacular play. Cortez Allen, victimized earlier in this half, broke it up. That's the only rule you have when you're talking to your quarterback, throwing the ball to a great receiver. Give him a chance. That time, Cortez Allen, who has been criticized a lot here in Pittsburgh the last couple weeks. Nice job playing the ball. Andre Johnson knows that's the place he has to be a great receiver now. Contested catches as he gets older and not as fast as he once was at age 34. Second and 10. Fitzpatrick slings one to Hopkins. He's just short of the goal line, so they have to get up there quick. Sneak it. Quarterback sneak. Get up there, sneak it. 100 seconds left. Polamalu with the vintage Polamalu play, trying to jump over the top he and time it. it. <laughs> so often he hits that and times it just right. <laughs> I'll tell you, he's evil Knievel of strong safeties, isn't he? I don't know anybody that would even want to attempt that move. number 43, defense, half the distance to the goal, still first down. And the one thing it does with a penalty in the last five minutes, it stops the clock. So that gives Houston a chance to collect its thoughts, figure out what they want to do, change personnel, and they bring in the fullback, Jay Prosh. From a half yard away, J.J. Watt in as an eligible receiver here. And Watt is near the ball, but Foster scores. So Watt, who caught one earlier against Oakland, was out there in the pass chance to catch a touchdown again but go to the sure hands of Foster to make it an eight-point game what a catch by Arian Foster and a great effort to score C57 Terrence Garvin can't bring him down and as you said earlier the carelessness throwing the football by Pittsburgh gives Houston a chance if they can get an onside kick plenty of time Extra point is good by Bullock. Seven point game, and we'll have an onside kick coming with 91 seconds left. So, where this game flipped at 13 3, Sean Sweezen kicked a field goal with 308, and then we had the sudden change. Martavis Bryant, first NFL catch, touchdown, made it 13 to 10. 26 seconds later, they would score again on the pass to Lance Moore. And then after another Texans turnover, Le'Veon Bell caught the touchdown. So the three touchdowns that quick. Part of 24 points within a three-minute span. It hadn't happened in 3,119 games going back to the 0-2 Seahawks. 24 or more points in a three-minute span that Pittsburgh put up and right now it's the working margin as they sit on a 30 to 23 lead with his onside kick in the hands team on the field and Danny Smith the special teams coach of the Steelers don't be surprised if he reads the deployment of the Texans and uses a timeout to educate his Steelers there are some young players out there on this hands team for Pittsburgh so often kickers like to use that middle dribble kick. Polamalu sits in the middle for Pittsburgh, and he said, no, they're definitely going this way. Bullock went for the middle dribble, and a timeout was taken at the last second by Mike Tomlin. That's why you save your timeouts. That's a good move by Mike Tomlin. Wait till the very last second, read the deployment, 
of the onside kicking team. Now, you can't overload like you could in the past. I mean, but a lot of a whole these, bunch of players yeah, on one can't, side. Yeah, you, for safety issues. So a lot of these special teams coaches, they have a check with me on sides kick. They just look at the uh, alignment of the return team, and they can kick it to the left, they can kick it to the right, or they'll kick it right up the middle. Watch Bullock. You put a lot of reliability in the middle of your defense. That's why Troy Polamalu yep. is there if it's a middle dribble. His last kick was bad. Lucky they have a timeout opportunity. He'll come to the others and get the hop off the hands of Hayward Bay. Got it's chance. free. Loose on the ground. Who's got it? In the pile, I think Michael Palmer fell on it last for Pittsburgh. Wow. On the bounce, Darius Hayward Bay had to go off of his hands. 82 Palmer was the body I saw going towards the ball. He came up with the recovery, and Pittsburgh will win. Squirts out there one more time. Watch 82 Palmer get on it. Oh, what a heads up play. Oof. But it was interesting because they showed the formation to the right. Polamalu had waved the guys over to the right the first time. Then they showed the middle dribble, but Pittsburgh called the timeout. So good job by Bolton to cross over his plant leg, kick it left, and get the big hop. Steelers will take two knees and win this game. Move to four and three. And John, I will point out, that when the Steelers go to their victory formation, who's back there? Troy Polamalu. <laughs> That's who I'd put back there. <laughs> you get a safety back there, and the Steelers will win again at home on Monday Night Football. That is 16 in a row. The longest in the history of Monday Night Football. And they did not look good early. Credit to the coaching staff, particularly Dick LeBeau, for dialing up some blitzes. Steelers create some turnovers. Roethlisberger, Antonio Brown. That's quite a combination. Each of these last three Monday night wins in this stretch of 16 in a row, the Steelers have overcome double-digit deficits. Haven't lost a Monday nighter here since 1991 when Bubby Brister was the quarterback, and Ray Hanley and Jeff Hostetler led the Jets to the win. And those two guys, or the Giants, I should say, there's J.J. Uh, Watt and Ben Roethlisberger, two players who we highlighted coming in, the star players on these teams, and both had their moments. Watt and the Texans early, Roethlisberger and the Steelers in that key stretch late. Pittsburgh advances to four and three. And the Texans drop to three and four. A couple of games back of Indianapolis in the AFC South. The least selfish John Gruden, our producer Jay Rothman, director Chip Dean, our terrific Monday night team, Mike Tirico. Good night from Pittsburgh as the coverage continues.